The market also reacted to China's decision to cut its interest rate by a quarter of a percent. Now, some investors saw it as a positive sign that China was committed to do all within its power to achieve its growth target rate of 7 percent. But others saw the cut as a sign that things could be worse than thought. It is China's sixth interest rate cut since November. Well, for more on China's decision, we are joined by Sung Wan Son. He's a professor of economics at California State University. Thank you for joining us tonight. I uh, want to get your take on this, this question, you know, about reaction among the traders I spoke to. It seemed really mixed. How do you think the investing community should look at China's rate hike, positively or negatively? I think it uh, should be uh, viewed uh, positively. Economic growth has been slowing down for some time, and the government has been taking a number of actions, including monetary policy. And uh, it's not surprising that uh, rates have been cut and uh, reserve requirements have been lowered. And my expectation is that uh, more will come in the future. So uh, the government is uh, uh, trying to make sure that economic growth uh, does not fall too far below uh, 7 percent. Well, uh, give us a sense just uh, how unprecedented this is to see six interest rate cuts in, in you know, about a year. Uh, that seems like quite a lot. Um, is it having really an, an impact on corporate and consumer spending? Why are there been so many? I mean, if it's, if it's working, why do they need more? Well, I think uh, this is only part of the whole package. Uh, not only is uh, the People's Bank of China uh, providing more liquidity and cutting the interest rates, but the uh, the physical authorities uh, in the government is also engaged in uh, public works projects and then other projects to uh, stimulate the economy. When you look at the Chinese economy, there are really the two key items. Uh, number one is uh, overall economic growth, and number two is the composition or what is called the rebalancing. If you look at the overall economic growth, there is no question that it is slowing uh, somewhat faster than most people anticipated. As a result, the government is doing what it can, and I'm sure uh, it will do more. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, government spending, we all know that the government has been authorizing uh, hundreds of billions of dollars of public, uh, public works projects, and all these are uh, desi uh, determ uh, designed to uh, stimulate the economy. And again, as I pointed out, uh, composition is also important. If you look at consumption, it is actually doing quite nicely, whereas investments, such as uh, uh, investments in real estate, uh, they're not uh, doing as well, and then that was quite expected. So I think we have to look at really the big picture, not only the overall growth, but also the composition, and I'm not all that worried. Okay. Well, China also has decided to remove caps on deposit rates. What is the significance of this, and what do you think is the goal in this? The government has been saying that uh, it is going to liberalize the uh, financial markets, and they have done that so far. And uh, our hope is that eventually this will uh, go to the foreign exchange market so that uh, restrictions on uh, current accounts uh, that had been removed and now restrictions on uh, the capital accounts can be removed as well. So it's a part of uh, the overall liberalization process. And also, I think, uh, as far as banks are concerned, uh, they are going to have to compete more aggressively for consumers' deposits, uh, which means that uh, they have to be more judicious about whom to lend to, because they want to make sure that not only they get good rates, but also they get their money back, uh, not make any bad loans. So I think, overall, this is a part of the overall liberal, uh, liberalization process uh, that the central bank has promised some time ago. And when do you think the Chinese consumers will be able to see the impact of, of the fact that more banks will compete for their business and therefore perhaps provide higher rates for deposits? Well, I think they should see that right away. Uh, Chinese consumers uh, do not have a whole, whole, you know, whole lot of uh, alternatives. Uh, essentially, they can put the money in the local banks, and then that has been controlled by the government. Now, that is not the case. Uh, they are going to get higher rates, which means that the uh, average consumer in the street, uh, they are going to be better off. They are going to be getting higher rates. So I think that's a, a step, really, uh, in the right direction. If you are a borrower, you are more likely to uh, get credit because, again, uh, the borrowing rate is going to be more determined by the market forces. So I think, all in all, uh, all these steps are uh, in the right direction. Okay, now China is also hoping to win reserve currency status for the yuan. Uh, do you think this will move it one step closer to that goal? I think so. Uh, IMF uh, so far has not included the Chinese RMB as a part of uh, the reserve currencies that they use, and uh, the Chinese government has been trying very hard to uh, be a part of it. And the number of steps that they have taken so far has been uh, very well received by the IMF. 
And you know, we may have to do a bit more, but I think eventually uh, RMB will become a uh, the part of uh, the reserve currencies at the IMF if uh, the steps continue. And, and lastly, just your take again, it sounds like you think there might, though, be more uh, rate cuts in the works. Uh, why would there need to be? And, and if there are, when do you think it would happen? Well, uh, you know, when the economy is uh, uh, slowing and then we need to stimulate, uh, you need to really use uh, both policies, the monetary and fiscal policies. Monetary policy means uh, lowering the interest rate and then cutting reserve requirements, which they have and will continue to do. And also fiscal policies, such as uh, public works, works projects and then uh, other government spending programs. So I think uh, the government is doing all it can to make sure that economic growth does not fall too far below their target of a 7%. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your thoughts. That was Sung Wan Sun, you. professor of economics at California State University.